give you every dream and wish are yours mother of christ mother of mine present them to my lord ave maria gratia plena dominus tecum benedicta tu as i see your smiling face every word every word is lost in your embrace Ave Maria gratia plena Dominus tecum In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Welcome here to St Mary's at Cannock on this feast day of St Anthony of Padua. I'll tell you a little bit about St Anthony. <coughs> St Anthony uh, was a contemporary of St Francis. He was a Franciscan, follower of St Francis, member of the Franciscan order. He had a vision of the child uh, Jesus, as you can see there. Uh, that uh, depicts that vision, of course, in an artistic form. And he was known uh, in his preaching for the certain tenderness and compassion which he showed, though he was, could also be fierce when he needed to be. He was a great theologian, a thinker, and also a great preacher, and uh, was greatly renowned. Very, very important for the early Franciscan order and the movement which, as it followed on from St. Francis's leadership himself. He is known to be one in our special prayers, our private prayers, our private devotions, as somebody who finds lost things. And I can't remember the story, which the reason for that, but no doubt somebody will come up with it and will know it very well. Uh, and he works, he does do his job. Uh, so whenever you've lost your keys, which happens, I mean, you must be very tired, this poor man there, having to help us out when we lose things. But you've lost your keys, or like me, you've lost one piece of paper, or there's some note somewhere, or whatever it might be. Uh, St Anthony will come to our assistance. Have a go yourself first, but ask St Anthony to help you, and, uh, and he's very good, as indeed are all the saints. So, we celebrate this Mass today. The Mass is offered for the souls of Irene and Bert Owen. Bert would have been 101 years old today, so Liz told us uh, on the comments as we, as we began Mass, and so we, our prayers are very much for his soul and for his wife Irene, and of course for all those who still keenly miss, miss him and love him. So as we begin this Mass, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for his grace and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the bearer of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Redeemer of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need, grant that with his assistance, as we follow the teachings of the Christian life, we may know your help in every trial. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we proceed to our readings from Scripture. As always, they're prepared in advance and recorded by members of our congregation, uh, our people here at St Mary's, uh, and uh, we, can, we continue with those readings now. A reading from the first book of Kings. Leaving that hall... Elijah came on Elisha, son of Shabbat, as he was ploughing behind twelve yoke of oxen, he himself being with the twelves. Elijah passed near to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother, then I will follow.
follow you, he said. Elijah answered, Go, go back, for I have done anything to you. Elisha turned away, took the pair of oxen and snorted them. He used the plow for cooking the oxen, then gave to his men who ate. He then rose and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I will bless the Lord who gives my consul, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. You are my inheritance, O Lord. And so my heart rejoices. My soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may consider the wonders of your law. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have learned how it was said to our ancestors, You must not break your oath, but must fulfill your oath to the Lord. But I say this to you, Do not swear at all, either by heaven, since that is God's throne, or by the earth, since that is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, since that is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your own head either, since you cannot turn a single hair, white or black. All you need say is yes, if you mean yes, no, if you mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Words from today's Gospel. I say this to you, do not swear at all. Don't swear at all. On the face of it, we might think that today Jesus is teaching us about what we generally call bad language. But no, actually, that was a couple of days ago when he was talking about the commandment, thou shalt not kill. Now today is about another commandment. In the Ten Commandments it's phrased usually in this way, do not bear false witness, or as we might put it very simply, don't lie. But actually this isn't even about lying, not precisely. Sometimes we tell less than the truth to protect others, to spare feelings, to be polite, to keep confidences. We might call these lies, but when we do this, we're not trying to deceive, we're not trying to harm, we're not trying to hurt, but rather to protect, to protect the well-being, the confidences, the dignity of others. No, this isn't about negative things. It's Instead, it's about, it's about honesty. It's about integrity. It's about what the modern world calls transparency. False witness is about deception, about selfishness, about protecting ourselves, not respecting others. 
And it might seem tough and challenging, but Jesus' teaching is disarmingly plain and simple. Say yes if you mean yes, and no if you mean no. We now move to our bidding prayers. Our particular focus on uh, Saturdays is on um, diverse petitions which people ask for, all kinds of different things, which is really wonderful, and then we don't fit into any particular category. But we always have, of course, prayers which have come to us um, in recent times, and particularly over the past few days. So we'll, we'll mention those and some very important ones. Uh, we'll mention, well, they're all important, of course, but we'll mention those now and then move on to the uh, particular petitions. Please pray for Eugene, who's uh, seriously ill after a brain operation in Dublin. Give thanks for uh, Louise and her twins, who are now happily back at home. I think they've come home this morning. Please pray especially for Keith, who's in hospital at this time. We've been praying for him for some time and uh, he's coming home, I think, today. But do pray for him and for uh, Veronica. He's coming home not very well at all. And it's a matter of great anxiety for his care that will take place. And I'm sure um, Veronica's very worried too. So we, we pray for Keith that he may uh, make a full recovery from his illnesses. And also for Veronica too in this really stressful and difficult time. We pray also for Fred. Uh, the brother of Maggie, who's in hospital again, quite poorly. For Betty, who had a fall and is now recovering. For June Unit, who's in uh, hospital after heart surgery. We pray uh, for Marie, who continues to recover, but it's taken a long time from her broken arm. Uh, and I think for the moment, those are the, the most urgent prayers. But we do add to those, of course, our more general prayers for those who are in need, our special intentions, if you like. We pray for peace and justice in the world. For all those who've had babies recently who can't see their families and have full support from partners. For schools and all who work in them as they reopen. For children being schooled at home and online. And the parents and teachers who are sometimes greatly challenged in supporting them. For those who've not been able to work in recent times and have been furloughed and are anxious about their jobs. We pray that all lives may matter to all people. Black, white, young, old, vulnerable, powerless, and particularly those in the womb. For business and workers, especially in catering, hospitality and entertainment, in their uncertainty about the future. For all who are shielding and isolated because of health conditions. For those who have mental health problems and the concurrent conditions means they're struggling in the lockdown. For all those who work and reside in prisons, for governors, directors, prison staff and inmates, that they'll remain safe in uh, the line of their uh, residency or in the line of their duty. For the families of prisoners who are, pre are prevented from seeing them at this time. And we pray also for all those in formation for the priesthood, the permanent diaconate and those who are discerning their vocations. We bring all these prayers to God. We ask for his great love and his mercy as we now call to him and Our Lady for our, his, our prayers.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Antony, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Anthony of Padua, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Irene and Bert Owen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with blessed John Sugar, with St. Anthony of Padua and with all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Now, across time and space, let's wish one, wish one another the peace and love of Christ. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father. Now I invite you to make your own act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being uh, here with me this morning. I understand from some of the messages on my little monitor here, my, my uh, spare phone, that there's been some um, disruption, interruption to broadcast. If you haven't received any, please let us know. We don't know when these problems happen. We don't know whether it's at this end or, or your end. Or, I mean, it's just impossible to know unless we get some kind of feedback. If it is our end, we can try and do something about it. If it's not, well, at least we've got the... the uh, the uh, sort of uh, the reassurance that it's not our fault. Uh, well, it's not a matter of fault, really. Um, I have the monitor on here, and I can see my own picture. You might be able to see. I can see myself stood at the altar, and your comments. But I obviously have not got the sound on, so I don't know if the sound's working. And when it's the parts of the mass when I'm quite still, stood at the altar, if it freezes, it wouldn't be immediately obvious to me. Though I can see myself moving at the moment on there. So if you can send messages to say that, as far as I can see from the monitor, I wasn't aware of a problem, but there's not a great deal I can do anyway. So I do apologise for that. It is um, uh, frustrating. I will say, though, that the recordings of the Mass, which are put up later, and uh, there's a notice goes out 
when I remember to do it in time. But it's usually up by mid-morning. Uh, the YouTube one is high quality, um, as good as you can expect, really, from the equipment that we've got. And the, the, um, the one on um, Facebook is it's reasonable quality, and the sound's are all right, uh, but the picture quality works best on a phone, really. If it's a larger screen, you can see it's not quite as sharp. But they, they, both, they both seem to be fine. So that suggests it's somewhere between when it gets into the phone and when it arrives to you that there's a problem. I do apologise. Um, uh, weather, weather broadcast, well, yesterday was awful yesterday in Cannock, um, but it uh, we, we looks as though we're heading for a, a really good day now. So, and we can console ourselves by knowing that uh, we were told by uh, our viewers from Adelaide that it's an awful day there today because it's the evening in Adelaide. Um, so, um, well, it's called Schadenfreude and it's not very nice. We shouldn't really be pleased at other people's misfortune. But we're sharing some of ours because the weather's been so awful this past week. And it's, it looks like it's going to be a warmer day today. Uh, here at St Mary's, if you're a long distance away, just a little, tiny bit of news very quickly. We are beginning to prepare for the opening of our church for private prayer. That sounds dead simple and it's not. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done um, and... Um, well, there we are. I won't bore you with that. But it's uh, also a positive thing and a positive symbol as well that we are moving towards being able to come back and celebrate Mass. And then we'll have to decide how we keep our wonderful uh, community together, which we want to do. So we won't just suddenly stop, even if the transmission comes and goes. Uh, we will uh, maintain something. And your ideas will be gratefully received. Um, I've got some ideas, but if you've got some, that's great. I'm talking too much. We're going to, we're at the end of Mass, before uh, we've actually finally finished Mass, we sing, we've got the Salve Regina, which is sung for us, but by all means join in at home, uh, which is a traditional uh, hymn to Our Lady, and we usually sing that at the end of Mass on Saturdays, and we will continue to do that here. So, anyway, that's enough of me. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed Antony, that we may persevere in integrity, the gift of faith, and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Espes Nostra Salve. A te clamamus, Exules Filii Ave, Acte suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostend.